Have you ever wondered what lies beyond the realm of death? Can quantum mechanics offer us a glimpse into immortality? Welcome to the Quantum Conundrum, the intriguing intersection of quantum mechanics and the concept of immortality. Quantum mechanics, in its simplest form, is the study of particles smaller than an atom. It's a world where particles can be in two places at once, and where reality is shaped by the mere act of observation. It's a world where particles like electrons, protons, and quarks dance to a tune that is completely foreign to our everyday experiences. They can simultaneously exist in multiple places, leap through solid barriers, and even be entangled, sharing a connection that transcends space and time. These behaviors, while seemingly fantastical, are well-established facts verified by countless experiments. A key principle in this quantum world is the idea of superposition. The ability of a particle to exist in multiple states simultaneously until it is observed or measured. It's a bit like a coin spinning in the air, being both heads and tails at the same time until it lands and is observed. And here's where things get really interesting. In the quantum world, the act of observation isn't just a passive process. It actively determines the state of the particle. The moment we observe the spinning coin, the moment we force it to choose between heads or tails, we are influencing the outcome. Now, imagine if we could apply this concept to life and death. Just like the spinning coin, could we be in a state of both living and dying at the same time, until observed? Could the quantum world with its peculiar phenomena give us a new perspective on the nature of existence and the possibility of life after death? The idea may sound far-fetched, even outrageous, but it's a thought experiment that takes us into the realm of quantum suicide and immortality. A concept that has stirred debate and controversy among physicists and philosophers alike. So if quantum mechanics allows for such peculiar phenomena, could it also hold the key to immortality? Let's delve deeper into this quantum conundrum. Imagine a game of Russian roulette, but with a quantum twist. This is the basic premise for our thought experiment known as quantum suicide. Now hold on to your hats as we delve into the mind-bending world of quantum mechanics. First, let's set up the experiment. Picture a man in a room with a gun linked to a quantum particle. The gun is designed to fire or not fire based on the state of this particle. If the particle is in one state, the gun fires. If it's in another, the gun doesn't fire. This is a game of chance, with the quantum particle playing the role of a loaded revolver's bullet chamber. Now here's where things get tricky. In the realm of quantum mechanics, this particle doesn't just choose one state or the other. Instead, it exists in a superposition of states, both firing and not firing at the same time, until someone observes it. This is what's known as the observer's role. When the man in our experiment observes the particle, he forces it to choose a state. According to traditional physics, there's a 50-50 chance the gun will fire. But quantum mechanics offers another interpretation. In the quantum world, when the man observes the particle, the universe splits into two parallel realities. In one, the gun fires, and in the other, it doesn't. The man dies in one universe, but continues to live in the other. From an outsider's perspective, they'd see both outcomes, a universe where the man survives and one where he doesn't. But here's the kicker. From the man's perspective, he can only ever experience the universe where he survives. After all, you can't experience being dead, can you? So even though an observer would see him die half the time, the man himself would only ever experience the instances where he survives. In this world of quantum mechanics, you'd find yourself always surviving the game no matter how many times you play. This, dear listeners, is the principle behind the thought experiment of quantum suicide. But don't go trying this at home, okay? Ever heard of Schrodinger's cat? It's a tale of a cat that is both dead and alive. Sounds confusing, right? It's meant to be. This paradox was proposed by physicist Erwin Schrödinger in the 1930s to highlight the peculiarities of quantum mechanics. Let's delve into this thought experiment. Imagine a cat placed in a sealed box along with a radioactive substance that has a 50-50 chance of decaying within an hour. If it decays, it triggers a mechanism that releases a poison, killing the cat. If it doesn't, the cat stays alive. 
Here's the twist. Until we open the box, we don't know whether the substance has decayed or not. According to the rules of quantum mechanics, the radioactive substance exists in a superposition of states. It's both decayed and not decayed simultaneously. And because the cat's life depends on the state of the substance, it too exists in a superposition of states. It's both alive and dead at the same time. Now, this might sound absurd in our everyday world. After all, a cat can't be both dead and alive, can it? But that's the crux of Schrodinger's cat paradox. It's not about the cat per se, but about the concept of superposition in quantum mechanics. Superposition is the ability of a quantum system to be in multiple states at once. That is, until it's observed or measured. The act of observation collapses the superposition, causing the system to fall into one definite state. In the context of our feline friend, opening the box to observe the cat collapses the superposition. The cat is either found alive or dead, not both. So, what does this have to do with quantum suicide and immortality? Well, if you were to replace the cat in this paradox with yourself, you'd exist in a superposition of states until observed, leading to the peculiar phenomenon of quantum immortality. Just like the cat, you'd exist in a superposition of states until observed, leading to the peculiar phenomenon of quantum immortality. So how does quantum suicide lead to quantum immortality? Let's delve deeper into this fascinating concept. Quantum immortality is derived from the idea of quantum suicide, which we've already discussed. It's a thought experiment that explores how quantum mechanics might impact our understanding of mortality. Imagine you're the observer in the quantum suicide experiment. Every time you pull the trigger, there's a 50-50 chance you'll survive or perish, but here's where it gets interesting. According to the many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics, each time you pull the trigger, the universe splits into two, one where you survive and another where you don't. Now, if we accept that our consciousness continues to exist in the universe where we survive, then from your perspective, you always survive, no matter how many times you pull the trigger. This is what we call quantum immortality. Your consciousness continues to exist in the universes where you survive, and you remain blissfully unaware of the alternate universes where you don't. It's as if death becomes an illusion, an event that happens in another universe, not yours. You are, in effect, immortal in your own world. But remember, this is a thought experiment, a way to explore the implications of quantum mechanics. It's not meant to encourage reckless behavior or to suggest that we can cheat death. It's a concept that challenges our understanding of reality and consciousness. In the quantum world, things aren't always as they seem. It's also important to note that quantum immortality is highly controversial. It's based on the many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics, which is not universally accepted. Some physicists argue that it's just a mathematical convenience, not a physical reality. Others point out that consciousness might not behave the way we think it does in a quantum context. So, quantum immortality is more of a philosophical question than a scientific fact. It's a concept that invites us to ponder the nature of existence and the mysteries of the quantum world. In the world of quantum mechanics, death may just be another state of being. But what are the implications of quantum suicide and immortality? And what do critics say? Quantum suicide and immortality, if proven, would have profound implications on our understanding of life and death. It suggests that consciousness is eternal, and we are immortal in some parallel universe, even if we die in this one. It could mean that we are not just transient beings, but infinite ones, living infinite lives in infinite universes. But this raises a plethora of questions. How does one define self in this context? If you exist in multiple universes simultaneously, which one is the real you? And if your consciousness can transfer between these parallel selves, what happens to the consciousness of the other you? These are deep philosophical questions that quantum immortality throws up, and they challenge our very notions of identity and existence. Another implication is the potential for a paradox. If every possible outcome exists in some universe, what happens when an outcome is impossible? Like a paradox. Does the multiverse theory allow for paradoxes, or does it somehow avoid them? 
These are questions that scientists and philosophers are grappling with. Turning to the critics, many argue that quantum suicide and immortality is purely a thought experiment and should not be taken literally. They say it's based on an overly simplistic understanding of quantum mechanics. For instance, it assumes that each measurement in a quantum system leads to a split in the universe, but this is not a universally accepted interpretation. Critics also point out that the theory doesn't account for consciousness. Consciousness is not a physical thing that can be split or transferred between universes. It's a complex, emergent property of the brain, and we don't yet fully understand it. To assume that consciousness can somehow exist independently of the brain and transfer between universes is a leap of faith that many scientists are not willing to make. In conclusion, while quantum suicide and immortality is a fascinating concept that challenges our understanding of life, death, and consciousness, it remains a controversial one. Many critics question its validity, arguing that it's based on oversimplifications and assumptions that are not grounded in empirical evidence. While it's a fascinating concept, quantum suicide and immortality remains a thought experiment, with critics questioning its validity. But what role does consciousness play in quantum mechanics? Well, to start, let's consider the Copenhagen interpretation, one of the earliest and most widely accepted interpretations of quantum mechanics. It suggests that a quantum particle exists in all possible states until observed, at which point it collapses into the observed state. This gives rise to a fascinating question. Does consciousness itself cause this collapse? There's a theory called the von neumann wigner interpretation, named after the mathematicians who proposed it. This theory takes the Copenhagen interpretation a step further by suggesting that it's not just any observation that causes the collapse, but specifically a conscious observation. In essence, consciousness becomes a fundamental aspect of the universe under this view. It's a controversial theory, no doubt, but it does make us think about the profound interplay between our minds and the fabric of reality. Similarly, there's the orchestrated objective reduction Orch OR theory, proposed by Roger Penrose and Stuart Hameroff. This theory suggests that quantum processes in the brain are linked to our conscious experiences. It's a daring proposition that attempts to bridge the world of quantum mechanics with the realm of neuroscience. However, it's important to stress that these theories are not universally accepted. Many physicists argue that consciousness has no special role in quantum mechanics and the collapse of the wave function happens due to decoherence, not conscious observation. This debate is far from settled. It's a fascinating area of research that brings together physicists, neuroscientists, philosophers, and even computer scientists. It's a crossroads of disciplines, a testament to the complexity and depth of the questions we're grappling with. Despite the uncertainties, one thing is clear. Our understanding of the universe and our place in it is deeply intertwined with our understanding of consciousness. As we delve deeper into the mysteries of quantum mechanics, we might also find ourselves exploring the enigma of consciousness. Our understanding of consciousness could well shape the future of quantum mechanics. So, does quantum suicide and immortality give us a glimpse into life after death? We've journeyed through the mind-bending world of quantum mechanics delved into thought experiments and paradoxes, and grappled with the controversial concept of quantum immortality. We began with the quantum conundrum, a field of science that simultaneously fascinates and perplexes us. Quantum mechanics, with its particles existing in multiple states until observed, has opened up a realm of possibilities that challenge our understanding of reality. We then ventured into the realm of thought experiments, using them as tools to explore the implications of quantum mechanics. These thought experiments, while not practical in the physical world, offer us a way to conceptualize and question the theories of quantum mechanics. The famous Schrodinger's cat paradox was our guide, illustrating the bizarre nature of quantum superposition. A cat trapped in a box with a quantum device exists in a state of being both alive and dead until we observe it. This paradox serves to highlight the strange and counterintuitive nature of quantum mechanics. We discussed the concept of quantum immortality, a theory which suggests 
that consciousness continues in parallel universes even after death in this one. It's a provocative idea, yet one that remains purely speculative and unproven. We also explored the various implications and criticisms of this concept. While it's a fascinating idea that stirs our curiosity, it's important to remember that it's based on interpretations of quantum mechanics and not on empirical evidence. Lastly, we examined the intriguing link between quantum mechanics and consciousness. Does the act of observation, an act linked to consciousness, truly affect the state of quantum particles? The debate continues, with no definitive conclusions yet. So, does quantum suicide and immortality give us a glimpse into life after death? The answer remains elusive. Quantum mechanics is a complex and mysterious field, and we are still in the early stages of understanding it. While we may not have definitive answers, the world of quantum mechanics certainly gives us plenty to ponder about the nature of life, death, and what might lie beyond.